In the last few years, we've seen adoption for graph databases increase quite significantly. Why is graph getting so popular? You know, in the 20 or 30 years, you know, we've been doing a lot of relational data. We've been doing Oracle and SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, right? And in the last 10 years, we've been doing a lot of document databases like MongoDB and Cosmos DB is a document database. But the need for graph has really come to a head and it's gotten really popular and I wanted to address why. Now, the math wonks will tell you all the mathematical reasons why graph is cool. And, you know, if you talk to Neo4j, they might talk about performance and flexibility. But fundamentally, there, in my opinion, there's only two reasons why graph is so popular and they're both related to each other. The first reason is that relationships between entities are descriptive, which means that you can preserve the developer intent behind those relationships. And the second reason is when you write queries to extract the data, you can preserve that intent in the query, where in other languages, preserving the intent is a lot more difficult. Um, so let's talk about developer intention, right? Preserving developer intention is critically important if you want to change something. Have you ever been on a project where you've said, you know, six months ago, we made a decision. Why did we do that? And you've lost intention. When you lose the intention, when you lose the why we did something, nobody ever wants to change it they, because they're scared they're going to break something they don't fully understand. Graph databases like Neo4j do an excellent job of preserving the intention of the relationships between the different nodes or entities. So let's look at a relational system, right? This is the famous Northwind database in a relational database that a lot of us learn SQL using this database, right? Um, and you can see the entities are well named, right? Employees, orders, customers, but the relationship is more of a mechanical relationship, right? It's a one-to-one -one or one-to-many or many-to-many -many relationship. It's not a descriptive relationship. And if you take that idea, that, la that, that problem that we have here with relational and bring it over to like um, Mongo, which um, Mongo uses JSON documents and JSON documents are very hierarchical, right? They, we have like a record or a book title and underneath it, we would have authors of those titles, right? Or something like that. And we could say this title has these authors or this title has these people related to it, but the description, like who's the primary author, who's the secondary author, that's up to the people maybe laying out the document and the description is sometimes hard to ascertain. Um, so those relationships, the intention behind those relationships are very easily lost. Um, and if you look at a Neo4j data model, you can't lose the intent behind the relationships because when you build the relationship, when you associate these things to each other, um, though you have to name them. You have to say why they're being uh, associated, right? So in this example, we are modeling email and uh, you could say, well, this user sent an email to this user and oh, this was a reply and it's coming back or it's a BCC. And that is being documented in the relationship itself. So in a graph database, we don't have like, you know, one-to-one -one relationships or many-to-many -many relationships. We have nodes and those nodes are associated with each other. And the description behind that is very, very clear. Now, that translates very well in the query language. That's our second reason. So if we look at the query language for relational, you know, we're doing like from left outer, right outer, full outer joins, right? Again, that's a very mechanical way of pulling the data back. In, in Cypher, let, let's compare what happens with Cypher. Cypher is the language in Neo4j. So, so if we look at T-SQL, which is up here at the top, we're saying, who bought the, this product, the chocolate? So we're joining, you know, from join, join, join in order to get to the customers that are there, right? Now, if you've ever seen really complicated SQL statements that have like 50 tables in them, it's very easy to lose why you're doing something. But in Cypher, it's so terse, we say, look, we are looking for the product Chocolade and we know there's a path to pull back the company name of the people who bought it. And that's what we're doing. So the cipher, because it's terse, terseness makes it easier to read. 
easy to read means that you get to preserve the intent. It's very clear why we drew this path to find the companies that bought this product, right? Um, and that, the, that because the relationships are descriptive, it's easy to navigate those relationships in the cipher and it's easy to preserve that intent. So, so those are the reasons why we use graph databases. These are the reasons why it's so popular right now. Um, I hope if you haven't looked at graph, uh, shout out to Neo4j, their training material is all free and their certification exam is free. So they're really doing their part in making sure that graph is easy for you to learn. And I really felt like the material was high quality so um, I'll put a link in the description of the video, check it out and uh, start your graph journey. Thanks.